I'm a full-time pathologist and part-time poet, and over the next minute or so, I would like to reflect a little bit upon the process of teaching and being taught in both those disciplines. Um, I'm a pathologist with an interest in uh, diagnosing tumors, and during my years of being taught and trained by pathologists, um, like at Hartford Hospital initially, Dr. Andrew Rickey and Dr. Richard Muller, and then later on in my fellowship years with Dr. Elvio Silva, Dr. Harry Evans at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, and Dr. Syed Ali, Dr. Ro Dr. Rosenthal, and Dr. Erozan at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. They were all, they all are uh, superb pathologists, superb diagnosticians, who are very skilled at guiding the surgeon's hands guiding the oncologists in patient management. But when they taught and trained me as a pathologist, uh, there was always that space that they left me. So they would teach the basic scaffolding on how to get to a diagnosis, but then that space for me to grow into. And that's something I try to emulate when I'm training the next generation of residents and fellows uh, in my current role of uh, stay, when we are looking at a piece of tissue, a tumor under a microscope, uh, letting them wander around on those landscapes of benign and malignant tumors, trying to figure out uh, their own thresholds, making mistakes and arriving eventually at the right diagnosis. Uh, now switching gears, uh, switching to poetry, uh, when I was in 10th grade, uh, we had uh, a poetry teacher, uh, Sister Helen Mary, um, she must be in her 60s, uh, slightly built. Uh, she always wore a white habit. And she arrived in class maybe twice a week to a group of about 40 or 50 mostly uninterested students. Um, the classroom looked out onto a play field where there was noise and dust and traffic sounds. And through that, she tried to get us interested into the English romantic poets, Keats, uh, Shelley, uh, Byron, and others. Um, but the way she made those images come alive and make it relevant to this class of Hindu boys and girls um, trying to teach us how a metaphor was different from a simile uh, really uh, had a lasting impact on me um, the way she made it relevant and perhaps was one of the reasons why I started writing later on in uh, medical school years. But having no tools of, that I learned of revising or editing I continued to write one bad poem after the another, and not until later, much later in life for me, till I was in my 40s, where I had the uh, opportunity to take classes with and learn from in workshop settings from Ravi Shankar, uh, Edwin Atrentham, uh, John Sirowicki, uh, John Stanisi, and Garrett Phelan, all superb locally and nationally known poets. Uh, they, they certainly provided me the feedback uh, of revision, editing, uh, making a poem better. Um, and then some of the feedback was sort of lost on me till quite some time, till I got, till later I reflected on their comments, but often it was what was not said. The little space, much like those brilliant pathologists said that they gave me to, to grow into, so that over a period of time, um, the, 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 the tools they were using allowed me the, the space to grow into, so I was learning to put the right words in the right order. Uh, and for that, for, just, for that gesture, uh, I'll always have admiration and gratitude.